Are you thinking of taking online lessons but you don't know what equipment to use? In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the entire online lesson setup, everything you need to know, so that you can walk into your next online lesson with confidence. Hey guys, it's Maria, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I post videos every single Monday and Thursday, so if you don't wanna miss a single upload, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. So if the past two years have taught us anything at all about music education, it's that it's expanding and it's going online, which means we have to be ready with an awesome online setup. We're gonna be covering the complete online setup from what platform to use, to how to set up your side view, over the keyboard view, how to set up your audio, and sharing your screen and your score with your teacher or student. So let's jump into the video so I can show you how to set up your online lesson space, both for students and teachers. Let's get it. So step one is picking a platform, and this is more directed at the teachers because I assume if you're a student, your teacher most likely already has their favorite platform. They just send you out the link before the lesson. But as a teacher, I've been using Zoom. Uh, I've also used Skype, Remote HQ, and FaceTime for lessons. And let me tell you that my favorite one by far is Zoom for its uh, two camera option options, screen sharing options, and multiple participant options, all of which are super important for online lessons, and I'll explain why a little bit later on in the video. And for the teachers, I would definitely recommend uh, becoming a licensed user on Zoom, so just um, getting the lowest paid subscription, which uh, basically gives you the right to um, host meetings of up to 100 people without cutting your time short. If you're using the free version um, and you have more than two participants in a call, I believe it kicks you out every single 45 minutes, which looks unprofessional and very annoying, especially as the teacher teacher. Before I got the paid version of Zoom, I even had students uh, offer to use their Zoom so I would connect to their call, obviously not being the host, um, because they had the paid version and I did not. So you don't want to be in my shoes, trust me, as a teacher, it's best that you get the paid version of Zoom with multiple participants. And the reason that's important is that as the teacher, you definitely want to have two devices connected to the call, um, a sideways view and an over the keyboard view that's going to make your life so much easier and so much better in terms of communicating what you're trying to say to your student and the same from the student side so it's recommended that the student also has a sideways and an over the keyboard view so that's already minimum four participants at a time in the zoom call step two is setting up your over the keyboard view now this is truly a staple for teachers and I would argue that it's even a staple for students now I do have students who have not set up their over the keyboard view and you can still benefit a lot from piano lessons without an over the keyboard view but it just solves so many problems um, for example if your teacher is trying to figure out what fingering you're using rather than them asking you and risking that you know you misspeak or they mishear you they can just look at what you're doing and then skip all those steps um, so it really does save a lot more time and makes the entire lesson process more efficient and more enjoyable there are lower and higher budget options for this each with varying levels of complexity and quality so let's get into the lower budget option first lots of my students use their phone to stream the over the keyboard view this is definitely one of the easier options all you need to invest in is a clamp arm or some kind of stand to hold up your phone over the keyboard I personally don't use this method but I have seen um, clamp holders that just clamp onto uh, the music stand and they kind of hook over the keyboard and you just attach your phone to the end of it I've also seen people use C stands and attach their phone to the end of it and I will link a few options for you guys to consider in the description and the third option is having a weighted stand so it's essentially a stand that you put on either the top of your piano if you have an upright it's weighted so it won't uh, tip over under the weight of your phone but essentially it's the same it just hooks over the keyboard you attach your phone to it and it streams your over the keyboard view these stands could be anywhere from $20 to $50 so compared to the other options that I'm gonna list later on they are quite affordable you want to then connect your phone to the zoom call maybe even connect it to a charger so it doesn't die on you and then just put it in the stand and you're done some of the pros of this option are obviously the budgeting side also because you're streaming through your phone it won't bog down your Wi-Fi as much as some of the later options with higher quality video but 
Some of the cons are obviously the quality of the video and because most stands don't go uh, too high up off the piano because they are resting on the piano or clamping onto the uh, note stand, you won't catch the entire keyboard most of the time uh, with this option. If you want a fancier version, um, but a little bit more pricey, you can swap out your phone for a webcam. It's smaller, less likely to tip over your stand, uh, so you won't need as sturdy of a stand, and it will also increase the quality of your video. What I use, and this is definitely a little bit more pricey, is a C-stand attached to a video monopod, and I attach my camera to the end of it and stream from my camera. Now I wanna spend a little bit more time explaining this whole setup because for me, having already invested in a vlogging camera for the channel, I really wanted to be able to use that camera instead of uh, spending more money on a webcam. So if you guys have a camera that's just lying around, maybe you guys want to up the quality of your video with something you already have at home. Before I get into the software that you need and all that good stuff, I really wanna stress that the most important thing or one of the most important things is to have a dummy battery and a charging cable. When you're streaming your camera for so long for a lesson, you really don't want your camera to die. For example, with my Canon EOS M50, it lasts about an hour, maybe an hour and a half before the battery dies. But with my dummy battery, it really lasts as long as it's plugged in, which is fantastic. The fact that I don't have to worry about charging my uh, battery before a lesson really makes my life a lot easier. I'm gonna be honest, it took me a while to figure out how to connect my Canon camera to Zoom or to my laptop in general and supposedly Canon has software that facilitates the whole process but for me no matter how many software updates I had on my laptop or how many different versions for Mac uh, that I thought were right I downloaded it really didn't work I watched countless tutorials so I just said forget it I'm gonna try something else so the first thing you need is cam link I'm gonna be like the old-school youtubers for a second this is just a USB and it comes comes with uh, free access to the software that you need with it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this is for gamers and for streaming, but hey, close enough. I also picked up two HDMI cables. Um, the smaller one has a mini HDMI um, output, I'm not really sure the terms, on one side and the input for a normal size HDMI on the other. And the longer one has two HDMI normal size outputs uh, on either end. So I just connect one of the HDMIs into the mini one because this side is gonna go into uh, the camera. The other side goes into cam link and this is um, going to connect to your laptop. So all of those cords, it took me a while to figure this out, connect your camera to your laptop. After that, you wanna download and follow their instructions to set up the software that comes with CamLink that's actually gonna let you stream uh, from your camera. It's called Game Capture, and essentially, as long as you have everything plugged in properly and your camera is on, you will see whatever your screen shows on your laptop. So when you've done all that, you'll have two applications running, essentially Zoom and Game Capture streaming everything that your screen on your camera is showing. Next, to connect the two, you have two options. You can either, uh, instead of streaming from your laptop, you can stream straight from the camera, but I would still recommend having that face-to-face -face view with your students. So you can also share um, footage as you would share a screen, you can just share the footage from another camera. Finally, moving on to step three, audio. The main thing you wanna have for good audio is an external mic, and I found it a little bit tricky to find um, a good external mic, and we're all about being resourceful on this channel, so I've been using my beloved Blue Yeti microphone. I also use this for my vo voiceovers in my videos, so figured I could reuse this for online lessons as well. It comes with lots of different settings. You can adjust the volume. Um, this is just the mute and unmute button. It goes red when you actually connect it to your computer. On the back side, you have the gain that you can adjust and all the options you have for recording audio. So you have bi-directional, cardioid, omnidirectional and stereo, and let's just touch on all of those for a second. Bidirectional means it records from both sides, so that's great for interviews because this is primarily a podcast mic and meant to be used for that. Cardioid records from one direction, so if it's only one person speaking. Omnidirectional, um, self-explanatory, 
course from all sides but what I love to use and Blue Yeti recommends this for um, music of recordings etc and it's the stereo option stereo mimics the experience of the listener so if you're gonna listen back to something in your headphones um, you're gonna hear it from one side and the other side you're really gonna be all enveloped in the sound and it's great uh, for music and music streaming music recording etc so when you plug it into your computer you're gonna have to go through all the steps to making the blue yeti your default external mic so that every single time you connect it to your laptop um, it knows to automatically connect to the blue yeti and then when you go into zoom you just go into more options for audio and set it to your blue yeti if it doesn't do so already and moving on to the fourth and final step sharing your score so I've had my trusty iPad for several years now it's never let me down this is my favorite device to practice on I almost exclusively practice for my iPad you guys know that from my practice vlogs and as a teacher it really adds that extra sophistication to your lesson to be able to show your screen while you're teaching so if you have an iPad iPad mini or any other tablet that can connect to zoom that's perfect and to be honest I used to always use scans on my laptop I would share my screen from there if I wanted to draw something in there but again I would be using the touchpad to kind of draw it was clumsy it took a lot longer than it should have so I highly highly recommend sharing your screen on whichever app you use for your scans on a tablet you guys know I use Foursquare, and so whether I'm trying to quickly write in some fingering or show some phrasing or write anything that is score specific and I need to do quickly and concisely, my iPad always comes in handy. And this goes both ways. If your student wants to show you something in their score and they have an iPad or tablet, um, please encourage them to screen share. So what you wanna do is make sure you log in with your iPad to the Zoom call. So that's adding a third participant from potentially both sides. And then screen share directly from your iPad onto the Zoom call while you write in your score, write fingerings, phrase, things, etc. If you want to use this option, the main thing you want to do is make sure you enable screen sharing for all participants and you're all set. Congratulations, you have completed the first step on your way to having the complete and ultimate online lesson set up on a budget. Now you know what platform to use, software to use, how to set up your over the keyboard view, your audio, and how to share your screen and score with your teacher or student. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. If you wanna watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here, and be sure to comment your favorite tip from this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.